Are you ready to dive into the heart of some of today's most controversial and pressing issues? We're about to unravel the debates surrounding a $50 federal minimum wage, shocking statistics on social welfare, and the unsettling aftermath of a tragic event. Get ready to challenge your perspective and join the conversation. Let's jump right in. Hey everyone! Welcome back to Stimulus Updates, your go-to channel for the latest news and updates on economic stimulus packages. I'm your host Joseph, and today we have some exciting developments to share with you. But before we dive into today's updates, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss an update on all things stimulus-related. We're here to keep you informed and empowered during these challenging times. All right, let's jump right in. Today, we've got a lineup of gripping stories that'll keep you on the edge of your seat. Strap in, because we're diving straight into the action. First up, picture this, a $50 federal minimum wage. Sounds too good to be true, right? Well, one potential lawmaker is floating the idea. Could it become a reality? We'll dissect the proposal and its implications. The debate over the federal minimum wage has been raging for years. Advocates argue that raising the minimum wage would lift millions out of poverty and stimulate economic growth. Opponents, on the other hand, fear job losses and increased costs for businesses. Now, imagine if the minimum wage was not just increased, but skyrocketed to $50 per hour. It's a proposal that's making waves and sparking heated discussions across the country. Could such a dramatic change really happen? And what would be the consequences? And in Florida, Senator Marco Rubio dropped a bombshell statistic comparing payments for Social Security beneficiaries to those for refugees. The numbers will shock you. But more on that later. But first, let's address the elephant in the room. The recent tragedy at the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl parade left a community reeling. What should have been a day of celebration turned into a nightmare, with gunfire shattering the festivities. It's a stark reminder of the growing fear in our society. Are we becoming numb to senseless violence? And where do we draw the line? Is it time to reconsider the death penalty? These are questions that demand answers. Intriguingly, legal migration could present challenges for Social Security, contrary to popular belief. The Center for Immigration Studies argued that legal immigrants arriving later in life might take more money from Social Security than they contribute, potentially straining the system. It's a nuanced perspective that challenges conventional wisdom. Now, let's address the elephant in the room Social Security's biggest immigration problem isn't what you might expect. Surprisingly, it's not illegal migration draining the system. It's the lack of immigration. Social Security is funded, in part, by its two trust funds, with ongoing payroll taxes covering the majority of the program's costs. In 2019, a report from the Bipartisan Center stated that immigration strengthens the solvency of the social security system by boosting the number of new workers without immediately adding more beneficiaries. This report highlighted that immigration, occurring at relatively young ages, increases the number of workers well before the number of social security beneficiaries rises. Legal migration, not illegal migration, is what the report refers to. It's a fascinating perspective, suggesting that more migrants coming to the country could actually bolster social security funds through increased payroll taxes. But, and there's always a but, social security's biggest problem remains its trust funds running out by 2034. Despite the potential benefits of legal migration, the stark reality is that social security faces a significant financial challenge. The impending depletion of trust funds poses a threat to the entire system, raising questions about its sustainability. Now, shifting our focus to Capitol Hill, let's explore the Republican perspective on immigrants and social security fraud. A representative emphasizes the scale of the issue, stating that before the surge in illegal mass migration, 
there were 1.2 million cases of illegal aliens using social security numbers in 2017. The numbers are staggering and alarming. However, the representative points out a shift in policy. The Trump administration actively tackled social security fraud by notifying 1.6 million employers of employees whose social security numbers didn't match government records. In contrast, the Biden administration post-2017 brought in 5 million illegal aliens and stopped the practice of notifying employers of fraudulent use of social security numbers. The representative argues that despite the harm caused by social security fraud and the increasing number of legal aliens committing it, there's no guarantee that an illegal alien committing fraud can be declared inadmissible or removable from the United States. The proposed bill aims to change this by streamlining the analysis and ensuring that criminal aliens can be held accountable and swiftly removed for victimizing Americans through social security and identification document fraud. Moving on to the next headline, Democratic Representative Barbara Lee is making waves with her call for a $50 minimum wage in California. In a state grappling with a soaring cost of living, her proposal is turning heads and raising eyebrows. But is it feasible? And what are the repercussions for small businesses and the economy at large? California, known for its high living expenses, is at the forefront of this battle. The cost of housing, healthcare, and education has skyrocketed, leaving many struggling to make ends meet. Representative Lee argues that a $50 minimum wage is necessary to ensure that Californians can afford basic necessities and maintain a decent standard of living. But opponents of the proposal warn of dire consequences. They argue that such a significant increase in the minimum wage could lead to job losses, business closures, and inflation. Small businesses, already operating on thin margins, may be forced to lay off employees or shut down altogether. And then there's Senator Marco Rubio's eye-opening revelation about Social Security beneficiaries versus refugees. The disparity is staggering and begs the question, is our system broken? Should those who have contributed to society for decades receive less than newcomers? It's a debate that's heating up. As we wrap up, I want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on these pressing issues? Should we rethink our approach to minimum wage and social welfare? Drop your comments below. I'm eager to hear your perspective. That's the end of today's video. I will see you guys in the next video. If you liked the video, please make sure to subscribe the channel for more upcoming videos.